In this video, I'm going to tell you about xenothal priming and the three different ways you can do it and why you really ought to. You've most likely heard of the term xenothal priming. You may not necessarily know what it means, and I'll try to explain it here. So a zenith is like if a thing is directly above you, like the sun, if the sun is at its zenith, it is directly above you, shining straight down. And the concept of zenithal priming is that you are priming the model a dark color, and then you are highlighting the prime with a light color sprayed predominantly from above to simulate the light from the sun or whatever light source coming down and hitting the model. Now, to a lot of folks, they, they say, I don't understand why I'm going to do that if I'm then going to go and paint over the top of it um, you know, right away uh, with opaque paints covering up all the work I did with that, you know, literally two-step process. It's not that much work. Um, but I'm going to explain a little bit in the next video, actually, the ways that you can use it as an amazing time saver to make you also look like you, you paint better than you do and, uh, and all that. But just understand that it does help even if you do paint over the entire model with opaque paints. It still helps to kind of you can see where the light parts should be and where the dark parts should be and where the shadows should be and that kind of stuff. And it's not just like, you know, dudes like me who uh, paint with Zenithal Prime to save time and to make my, my paint jobs look better, make it look like I know how to properly blend the cape and stuff like that. Uh, I also asked, you know, uh, YouTube's Sam Lenz and also YouTube's Vincent Venturella and both of them were like, yeah, no, we do Zenithal pretty much just about everything that uh, we paint and those guys are way better than me as far as painting so at least take their advice if you're not going to take mine so xenothal is a very simple process and it's usually black and white and when i say black and white i don't mean oh it's just as easy as black and white i mean generally the colors you use are black on the undercoat and then white coming down from above but not always sometimes you'll use uh, different colors for that. Like if you were going to be painting, let's say, Blood Angels. Blood Angels from Warhammer 40,000 are predominantly in red power armor. So in that situation, you could just spray them red with a red primer and be like, there you go, I'm already halfway there. Well, you know, if you want it to look even a bit better, what I would tell you to do before you spray that red primer down on the top of it is to start with maybe black primer or maybe even like a dark brown because red's a warm color, brown's a warm color, that kind of stuff. And you can get these nice kind of shadows. The light comes down, hits the shoulder pad, and then kind of falls off as it comes underneath the arm and stuff like that. These are the little things that make models look a lot more impressive. And sure, you could go in with a brush and paint in the shadow and do a bunch of glazing and shading and all kinds of stuff like that. Or you could cheat, which is what I like to do. And I don't really see it cheating all that much. So when you start with your models, you need to make sure to get the dark color, the base color, everywhere. Not just above. At the, well, that's what the second color is going to be. The color is going to come from above. But the base color, whether it's black or a dark brown or dark purple or whatever you're going to use as your base color, needs to be everywhere. And I don't just mean you need to make sure to spray it on all the parts you can see. You also want to get it up in, underneath the arms. If they're holding a gun, you want it up under here, that kind of stuff. You have to put it on there. Don't put it on too thick. You want to go in like, you know, a couple of different coats. But once you've sprayed the model from above, then knock it over onto its back and then spray it again and try to shoot it. You know, if, if, if well, if this is the model here, right, and this is the base, you want to shoot kind of towards the base. So you're getting up underneath and then you want to do the same thing on the back side. Once the front side dries a little bit and isn't too tacky, you flip them over onto their tummy and then you spray them from there. You want to get black or whatever your dark color is in this situation into all the nooks and the crannies and just make sure that everything is completely coated. And then depending on which way you're going next, you either are going to take those models and in, in this situation that I'm working on with these guys, I did rattle can, but usually I use airbrush. But either way, um, if you're going to be doing the dry brushing thing, which I'll talk about in, in a little bit, then you're going to want to set those models aside and let the, the primer really kind of like that black primer kind of cure and like really dry and get settled in there. But if you're going to be doing either uh, airbrush or rattle can, you can go straight from the dark phase directly to the light phase. The majority of the time when I'm doing a Zenithal Prime, I am using an airbrush. Like I said, generally almost all my priming is done with an airbrush and it's partially because I live in an area where it is either too humid or too cold to prime outside most of the year. So 
you know, it, it's sometimes an issue. And so therefore, just getting yourself even a cheap airbrush, if you're really kind of starting to get into the hobby, is going to save you so much time and effort and everything else and make you a better painter. Just take my word for it. The, the thing is, is that you want to, once you've got that whole kind of uh, black thing all taken care of and everything set, you want to spray down generally with white. I like to use Monument White Primer. I think it's one of the best white primers out there. Um, but you use whatever kind of white primer you want to fire through your airbrush in this situation. And you're spraying down on the model. If this is the model here, and this is the base, and this is the head, you're spraying down. You're kind of getting like a cone around it. And it can go very, very quickly. And with the airbrush, the, big, the biggest thing to, to my mind is that you have a lot more control. If you've got a spot you sort of missed on the arm and it goes to shadow way too dark, it's very simple for you to just kind of get in there and just fill those areas in. And you can really pinpoint, even with a not very good airbrush or an inexpensive airbrush, you can really pinpoint and get in there and hit the exact spots that you want to hit. Now, I'm not a very good airbrusher. I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't paint details. I certainly don't paint eyes with my airbrush or anything like that, like some of the pros do. But it really is making the paint jobs look a lot better when I can use a good white primer. Some people use white ink, like a, an acrylic ink. It depends on what you want to do with it. And you can just spray down on top of the model. Uh, again, kind of getting from an edge, making sure you don't miss any like parts that should have more light, but definitely keeping kind of between the legs, underneath the gun or underneath the shield and that kind of stuff. Those parts should stay dark because those are your shadows. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, and a lot of people obviously don't, you can do the second layer with a white rattle can, just like you did. I did the first one, obviously, in that situation uh, that you saw before with rattle can, sprayed the models all completely black. In the second phase, you could use a rattle can to spray down. Here are some downsides to rattle can, in my perfect, in my opinion here. Uh, perfectly honest, I've yet to find a rattle can that I really, really like. A white primer, even a white paint coming through a rattle can, through a spray can, that I really like. You have a tendency to get some speckles. You have a tendency to get some texture. Now, if you like texture in your models, like if you're painting stuff that you want to be kind of like chunky or you want it to be like definitely not have a very smooth surface, and there's lots of different paint, um, you know, uh, kind of ideas out there, different types of painting uh, techniques and things like that that kind of like that real kind of chunky sort of uh, material. I talked about different uh, kind of paint different uh, ideas in last week's video, Pachow. Uh, but if you want to go with that kind of slightly chunkier stuff, then the uh, rattle can works quite well. The other thing too is that almost in every situation, rattle can primer is going to have a much whiter white than airbrush primer. You can keep layering the airbrush primer in the same spot over and over again to try to get it to be very light, but it will kind of hover a little bit more towards gray. If you like a much, much brighter white that then fades down to the darker area, rattle can might be for you. But again, remember, it's a little harder to kind of control it and get it in the spots you like. In this situation here, I'm using like a Rust-Oleum uh, white sandable auto primer that you get from the auto parts store. I got to be honest, that's probably one of the better things that I've found is using sandable auto primer. Um, it just seems to work a lot better even than some of the hobby rattle cans as far as white primer is concerned. So if you've got a white primer that you like a lot that is in a rattle can, let us all know down in the comments below because frankly, I'd like to find a good one uh, just in situations where I need to do the rattle can instead of doing the airbrush. Now let's say you don't have an airbrush and you don't want to do rattle can. There is another way that you can do a Zenithal. It will give you a different overall look but you can use a cheap, big fat makeup brush. I have talked about the benefits of cheap, big fat makeup brushes many times before on this channel. Here's one, Pachow. Um, but you go and you just get yourself something with a big, big, big head and you use some white paint. Again, here I'm using some Monument Bold Titanium White and you just sort of dab it on there and then you brush most of it off onto a paper towel and you just get as much of it off that paper towel as possible and then you just start dry brushing onto the model. You're holding it and you're, brush you're brushing pretty much down. You don't want to scrub back and forth too much. In these videos, it looks like I'm maybe going up and down, but I'm actually going down and then I'm, it's like a cycle, right? I'm doing this. So you just keep doing that so that the highlights hit the top of the head, but not the underside of the chin. They hit the top of the shoulders, but not the underside of the arms, that kind of stuff. And it will give you a more contrasty look than the other two. Here are some models that are um, board game models from Osprey Miniatures that I painted in a live stream uh, back in 2020. And they were just basically primed black. I quickly dry brushed them white 
the next day and then all these colors are transparent colors except for the metallics and stuff like that. And it's a super quick little process but it gives you a very different look than the other uh, processes, the other two. Unless the model is very smooth. If the model is kind of bumpy, you're going to get definite like real like kind of almost stark highlights in certain spots and then in the you know in the folds in between here you're going to get darker spots and you don't get that as much with say like the airbrushing or even the rattle can but with dry brush you do and so if that's a look that you're looking for a little bit more graphical almost kind of like in that sort of black and white but with a color thrown on top of it it's actually kind of a cool look if you're kind of going for that but if it's a big smooth model then you don't get that as much and you get a little bit of a more of a nice blend which is also good the most important thing to understand is that when you use the big fat makeup brush, there are times when you just can't get the big fat makeup brush into certain areas where there probably should be a little bit of the white, giving a little bit more highlight in certain areas. This chaos guy, he's got his gun held way out in front of him. I, I don't really like this pose. I never have. But uh, he leans forward more than looks normal. To get into the smaller places, you use a smaller makeup brush. You don't use a big fat one. You use a much smaller one and then go in there and just try to add it so that it looks right in the right spots and then once you get that all ready to go then it's time to start throwing down color. So there are pros and cons to all three of these different types of Zenithal. Like I said personally I'm a big fan of airbrush but then you have to have an airbrush and a place to be able to do the airbrushing and that kind of stuff. Rattle can is relatively inexpensive and does coat things pretty well but sometimes it can be a little dusty speckly plus you don't want to do that in the house at all certainly like way less than you want to do airbrushing and then uh, the dry brush is inexpensive because you're using cheap makeup brushes um, but you end up having a much higher kind of contrast look which sometimes that's what you're looking for. So I hope that you give a chance and start thinking about Zenithal highlighting. Look at some other stuff out there on the internet about Zenithal highlighting. And like I said, next week, I'm going to show you what the next steps are. Now you got this black and white weird looking model. How do you make it look like something that you actually painted on purpose and made it look this way because you meant to and because you're good at blending and you, because you're a good painter?